Good morning. We welcome you to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. We're glad to see that you're here to worship with us this morning. Uh, a couple of things before we begin. First of all, we are aware of the weather, okay? I said good morning. It could be good evening as well, just based on how dark it is outside. Uh, we are aware of that. We're keeping an eye on it. Uh, we'll tell you where you need to go if there's anything that changes. And so for right now, where you need to go, where you need to be, is right here. Okay? Because we have a wonderful worship that's in front of us here today. God is coming to meet us here uh, through his gift of the meal and his gift of the word. And Pastor Tom has a, a great message today concerning that word. And as distracting as that may be, I hope and pray that you're able to follow and pay attention to his message here today and our worship. Uh, because God has come to meet us here. And God gives us his gifts of peace and comfort and grace at this time. And so would you please stand as we begin our worship. And we begin today in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our liturgy will be found on the screens. Let's join in singing our gathering hymn. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, before God this morning and in the company of one another, let us confess our sin. God eternal, three in one, and one in three, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. mercy. Dear friends, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything is becoming new. So in Christ and because of Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins have been taken away and you you are made new. So be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Sheila. Good morning. I'd like to welcome all the children up front with me this morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming up today. I think it's a good thing you've got a helmet. Yes, fabulous. You're going to see why in a little bit. So we're going to just pretend for a minute. We're going to have to be really good pretenders. Who here likes to pretend? I love to pretend. So it's gorgeous outside right now. It's a beautiful summer, sunny day. Are you there with me, Addie? Okay, we're there. We're going to pretend. So it's a great day. So one of the things that we like to do when it's a really nice day, I'm just going to leave this right here. I'll be right back. What is this? It's a bike. You're right, Will. It's a bike. Now, you know what, what's special about this bike? It ha- bike has lots of bike Yeah, it happens to be Mr. Nick's bike. He let me borrow it this morning. And there's something really cool about this bike. What does it have on the back here? Yeah, there has extra wheels, right? We call those training wheels. And yeah, so when you ride this bike, is this going to be pretty easy to ride, do you think? What do you think? Claire, is this one pretty easy to ride? In comparison to this one, right? What about this? I feel like I'm yelling. I don't know. I can't hear myself, but hopefully everybody else can hear me. Okay, so this is Sarah's bike. Now, should I let go of this one? What do you think? Ah. Ah, maybe not, right? What is it missing that Nick's bike has? What does it not have on there? Training. It doesn't have those training wheels, right? It doesn't have those extra ones. All right, Mr. Nick, get on there for a minute. Let's, let's take these things for a spin. No, but, oh, wait a minute. I can't even let go on it because one training wheel is actually not working. It's, it's not working? Should Miss Sheila try? I'm willing to try. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> He's a great little mechanic. Oh, did you fix it? No. Oh, I see it's loose. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, you know what, though? Before I ride a bike. So let's put our helmets on, Nick. Put our helmets on. That's important. Oh, I forgot one thing. We need to ask an adult. Pastor Tom, is it cool if we ride a bike in church? Maybe just a little bit? Okay. So we're going to put our helmets on because safety first. Did I just totally ruin my microphone too? It's better than going outside today. So put my helmet on. This is not my helmet, as you can probably all tell. But we are going to also take who with us? What does that say, Sarah? God's love. love. Mr. Nick, you're going to take some God's love with you today. And I'm going to take some God's love with me too. All right, I made it so you could see it. Let's go, boy. Let's try. We're going to see whose bike is a little easier to ride. I'm just much faster. I bet you are much faster because your bike probably fits. I can't even find my seat. Okay, here we go. Ready? Let's go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Oh, you guys, I'm just, I can't balance. Look at, he did so much better. Didn't he do much better? You got way further. All right, come on back. So you know what? This is kind of a silly way, but I want you to remember next time you guys go ride your bikes, especially as you're trying to learn, It gets pretty difficult when we take those wheels off, doesn't it? 
something kind of hard to learn to ride a bike without it. Thank you for your help, sir. But you know who's always with us? Who's on my helmet? Who did I bring on there? God's love. God's love never leaves us, right? When something gets hard, when we take those wheels off and it gets hard, God's love is still with us. He's still going along for the ride, isn't he? And sometimes, you know what I realized? Is I, was, I went for a walk this morning before it got really crazy outside. And this came to me. We're going to talk about a word called trinity. And try means three, okay? For the older ones, Claire knows that. Try means three, which we're talking about the three things in one. You probably heard this in Sunday school. I know if you've been with me, you have. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, look on the back of this bike here. We got a Father, a Son, and a Holy Spirit. You can actually see all three, right? But if I take some of those away, are they all three still with me, Will? They're still with me, aren't they? Where do I take them? Where do you take God's love? Right in your heart. Exactly. He's always with you. So I want you guys to remember that, okay? You did a great job. We went through the worst part of that storm, I think, up here today. We're ready to go. We can now hear when we get to the sermon, right? All right, let's fold our hands and we'll say our prayers. Dear Jesus, thank you for your love and your protection and helping me when things are hard. In your name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Thank you for sticking up here with me. Yes. Perfect morning for the creation story. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was out with form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let there be so for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. 
And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground and according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that lives and moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. A reading from Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Thank you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. 
And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, today we are celebrating, uh, it's really a pivot point in our church here. It's Holy Trinity Sunday. And what that means is we have come through uh, what we call the festival half of the church here where we marked the life of Christ and all the major things that occurred uh, in his life leading up to our salvation uh, at Calvary and the empty tomb beginning with his birth in Bethlehem. Uh, And next week we begin the time of the church as we celebrate what that all means for us and how we take him with us into every part of our life. But today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. And uh, Trinity Sunday is set aside for us to remember. And the scripture lessons, I'll tie those together for you in just a couple of minutes. The scriptures remind us of uh, that God has revealed himself to us as triune. That's three persons in one God. Okay? Three persons in one God. And in Matthew 28, 16 through 20, which I just read, called the Great Commission, we have the clearest enunciation of the three persons of the Trinity together. That is in all of the Scripture. Okay? But where I was led to in this text, I want to take you with me. Because we have to understand the context like always, of Matthew 28. Because there's one phrase in our gospel reading that might be hard to understand, uh, besides Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because we know that's unexplainable. But it's this one. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them, and when they saw them, him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Really? Really? Whatever do you think might have caused them to doubt? Well, in order to get a handle on that and get our heads wrapped around what might have caused these 11, because Judas was gone by this time, to doubt, you have to read all of Matthew 28. And it starts with, oh my goodness, the best news you'll ever hear. And it's part of Matthew that I know you know, but it never gets old. Okay? Matthew 28, 1 to 10, never gets old. So if you're ready for some good news on a stormy morning, here you go. Okay? Never gets old. Matthew 28, 1 to 10. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So, 
they, the women, departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. I told you, it never gets old, folks. It never gets old to hear that conversation between the angels and the women and between Jesus and the women, okay? But then, before we get to this great commission where they caught up with Jesus in Galilee, and by the way, that wasn't walking around the corner, okay? That was miles and miles and miles away. It was more than a one-day trip, okay? Probably took several days to get back to the Galilee, okay? Okay? Listen to what happens in between. Because often we read that on Easter, we read this on Trinity, but there's verses 11 through 15 in between, which will give us an insight into why perhaps it was so difficult to be a Christ follower and to believe that message after it happened. While they were going, behold... Some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a significant sum of money to the soldiers and said, tell people, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. And Matthew wrote this gospel a few decades later. This story has spread among the Jews to this day. So do you think it's plausible that on their way to Galilee, this story, along with the Mary's story, reached their ears? It was difficult because they were hearing competing stories. It was difficult because the women said one thing, the soldiers, the chief priests said the other. Has that ever happened to you today? Or do you only hear what we say here on Sunday morning? Is this the only place you get your spiritual information? Or do you hear other opinions of Christ? Do you hear other opinions that, by the way, circulate with much regularity among the people even to this day? Do you hear those other opinions? And can they cause doubt? And can they cause confusion? And can they cause struggles? Folks, there will always be people who take the opposite opinion. One commentator called verses 11 through 15 the great counter commission as opposed to Christ's great commission. Go make it up. Go tell them. With urgency, they sent them. And because of all that confusion, we in the church sometimes think we have to have the Trinity explained completely. I gave this offer last night. I'll give it today. Okay? Okay? If any of you 
can explain the Trinity, the Godhead, and the inner workings of it beautifully and perfectly, this microphone is yours for the rest of the sermon time. If you can do it, by all means, enlighten us. Oh, no one came forward again. I got to finish the sermon, Pastor. I got to finish the sermon. Okay. See my point? We cannot explain how one plus one plus one equals one. Can we? Oh, and by the way, I, f I forgot the other part of that challenge, and you had to do it without an apple. Okay? Because I've used that one uh, way too much. The point is, folks, we can't explain the Trinity, but the Trinity has revealed himself to us. And he's revealed himself to us in Christ. He's revealed himself to us in the love which he has given us in Jesus. And this triune God of ours is still present among us. He's still present with his creation. He is still present with his new creation. Did you catch it as Crystal was reading that creation account so beautifully for us this morning? Did you catch what happened on the sixth day? On the sixth day, God created us in his own image, and it was perfect. But sin broke that up, and the Garden of Eden turned into that. Weather that scares whether that frightens, whether that destroys. But on the sixth day, God said it was good. And folks, there was another sixth day. Because today is the first day. And the sixth day is Friday. And there was another sixth day when the sky turned black. And the one who created it, and it was good, recreated it and said it is finished. And we know it's not over. But on the sixth day, when he died, everything that needed to be done for the new creation happened. And then he rested And then it started over, and the first day came again. And now, that's the blessing we're given. Because in our baptism, we die with him on the sixth day. And we will rise with him on the first day. Some call that the eighth day when it all becomes new again. And so, folks, the gift of God's presence is what sustains us. And it sustains us through times of doubt because, did you also catch that? As Matthew records, they worship, but some doubted. Didn't stop Jesus a bit, did it? The presence of God in Christ with us this morning does not depend on your doubt or your lack of doubt. It does not depend on my doubt or lack of doubt. His presence in the Eucharist will not depend on Pastor Joe's doubt or lack of doubt as he presides over it today. It all depends on God. And his presence is just because. Just because. And he's there. And you know what, folks? It's a beautiful thing that the God of the universe would still live and dwell with us. It's a beautiful thing that calls out our adoration, that calls out our faith, that indeed in God's economy, one plus one plus one does equal one. And maybe... That's why we call him our beautiful Savior. Because God is the creator 
and we are the created. And God is the Savior, and we are the saved. And God is the sustainer, and we are the sustained. Three in one, given to us. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's give thanks with hearts and hands and voices. Amen. Amen. As Pastor mentioned, it is Trinity Sunday, and because it is Trinity Sunday, uh, we use a different creed to confess our faith. We use the Athanasian Creed. It's the longer of the three creeds, the Apostles, Nicene, and Athanasian Creed. And before we confess that, it's good to understand why we do that today. You see, in the fourth century, there's a priest by the name of Arius who went around proclaiming that Jesus was not God. Okay, that he was just a man, that he was not God. And unfortunately, this caught fire in the church, so much so that the church decided to have a council to try to address this heresy, this false teaching. And from that comes one of the creeds that we use, the Nicene Creed, a statement as to who God is, specifically who Jesus is. But unfortunately, that creed was not enough, and it continued on into the 5th century. And that's where we end up with the Athanasian Creed. It was meant to be the final word against this false teaching that Jesus is not God. And so as we confess this faith, you're going to hear language like God is this, God is not this. It's meant to be the final word. And you're also going to hear language like the Catholic faith. To be clear, it's not the Catholic church like popes and priests, but it's the universal church. It's the church that believes God came into this world, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to give us the gift of salvation. And so let's stand together as we confess our faith using the word of the Athanasian Creed that God indeed is with us. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. Whoever wants to be saved should above all cling to the Catholic faith. Whoever does not guard it whole and inviolable will doubtless perish eternally. Now this is the Catholic faith. We worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the divine being. For the Father is one person The Son is another, and the Spirit is another. But the deity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-eternal in majesty. What the Father is, the Son is, and so is the Holy Spirit. Uncreated is the Father, uncreated is the Son, uncreated is the Spirit. The Father is infinite, the Son is infinite, the Holy Spirit is infinite. Eternal is the Father, eternal is the Son, eternal is the Spirit. And yet there are not three eternal beings, but one who is eternal, as there are not three uncreated and unlimited beings, but one who is uncreated and unlimited. Almighty is the Father, almighty is the Son, almighty is the Spirit. And yet there are not three almighty beings, but one who is almighty. Thus the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. Thus the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. As Christian truth compels us to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so Catholic religion forbids us to say that there are three gods or lords. 
the Father was neither made nor created nor begotten. The Son was neither made nor created, but was alone begotten of the Father. The Spirit was neither made nor created, but is proceeding from the Father and the Son. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three spirits. And in this Trinity, no one is before or after, greater or less than the other, but all three persons are in themselves co-eternal and co-equal. And so we must worship the Trinity in unity and the one God in three persons. Whoever wants to be saved should think thus about the Trinity. It is necessary for eternal salvation that one also faithfully believe that our Lord Jesus Christ became flesh. For this is the true faith that we believe and confess, that our Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, is both God and man. He is God begotten before all worlds from the being of the Father, and he is man, born in the world from the being of his mother, existing fully as God and fully as man, with a rational soul and a human body, equal to the Father in divinity, subordinate to the Father in humanity, Although he is God and man, he is not divided, but is one Christ. He is united because God has taken humanity into himself. He does not transform deity into humanity. He is completely one in the unity of his person, without confusing his natures. For as the rational soul and body are one person, so the one Christ is God and man. He suffered death for our salvation. He descended into hell and rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people shall rise bodily to give an account of their own deeds. Those who have done good will enter eternal life. Those who have done evil will enter eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. One cannot be saved without believing this firmly and faithfully. Please remain standing for prayer. Called together in the Spirit's embrace, let us pray for the mending of God's world. Holy mystery, you call us to be your church. Keep calling your people to faithful reform. Give us vision and courage to share your new life with all the world, here and at St. Mark Lutheran Church in Milford, Ohio, and Lutheran Church of the Cross in Hanover, Massachusetts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Joyful Creator, you made a wondrous universe and call us to be partners in its care. Inspire delight in the furry, scaly, watery, breezy, sandy creation you love, and inspire us to bring about creation's healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, you love our enemies and bless all people. Make our hearts yearn to be joyful and share your generosity. Help leaders and citizens use political power in service of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate one, you bring about the fullness of life. When sorrow wounds faith, send wise ones to comfort and encourage those who suffer. Heal your people in body, mind, and spirit, especially those we name before you now, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Trinity, you call us together to bless your world. Guide all who are preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism into the joy of new life in your name. 
Strengthen families and enfold the newly baptized in your rich grace, especially Joseph Eugene Jaster. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of glory, protect the construction workers as building continues on the Child Development Center and bless all the preparations that are underway. Shine through us into the community in which we've been placed that many would come to know Christ through a beautiful Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, you bring life out of death at every turn. We give you thanks for all the saints and for dear ones whom we mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And our worship continues with the offering. Would you please stand? Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You have revealed your glory as the glory also of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, three persons, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had broken it and given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Our title, our, our theme for this morning's worship has been the gift of God's presence. And we heard that wonderfully articulated by Pastor Tom. And we get to see that here as well. Because God comes to meet us here in this meal with Jesus' body and blood. In, with, and under the bread and wine given and shed so that we get to experience his presence in our lives. And with that comes his love, his forgiveness, and his mercy. So we invite you to come and receive the gifts of God's presence for you today. The table is set. Please be seated. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his joy and in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Last weekend marked the end of the festival season of the church year. Uh, many of us will be traveling far and near in the coming weeks and months uh, before we are sent today. Let's pray for blessing on summer travels and adventures as we begin a season of rest, service, and renewal. So let us pray together. Lord God, 
You have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And before the blessing today, it would be good of us to go to our God and give him thanks for his protection uh, during the storm here today. So let's do that. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping us safe during the storm. Uh, we pray that as we leave this place, that your continued uh, presence would go with us. We also pray for those who may be negatively impacted by this storm, that you would continue to remind them of your presence in their lives, no matter what is happening, no matter what they're going through. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord, the Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless, preserve, and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Live in love as Christ loves us. Amen.